Welcome to Paper Crafting with Rebecca. I'm Rebecca. You may have seen these cocktail napkins before. I used them in a previous YouTube video. They're triple ply and I had tried them out on an experiment that I did earlier adhering them to cardstock using plastic wrap with an iron. I wasn't real crazy about how that project turned out, that experiment, and so I decided to just go back old school the way I normally do it, and that's with either Mod Podge or some golden regular gel mat. So I thought I would bring you along, show you making some cards using this technique with both a napkin and also doing the same sort of thing with newspaper. So here I am just separating the three plies. I'm wanting to make sure to get all two of the back plies off of the printed front ply. And it takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of time, but it's well worth the effort to just carefully work your way through and pull those apart. Okay, once I have them pulled apart, I'm going to be putting that onto a 4.5 by 5.5 inch piece of white cardstock. That's a little bit larger than what I will probably use it. I'll trim it down, but that gives me a good work area, and it's real easy to cut because that's one quarter of a standard piece of 8.5 by 11 cardstock. My next decision is if I want to use my Mod Podge Gloss Luster or if I'd like to use my Golden Regular Gel Mat Medium. I chose the Golden Gel Mat because I find that it's just easier to put on the really super transparent piece of napkin onto the cardstock because I just have to paint the cardstock with it and then put, use pressure to put the uh, paper uh, napkin onto that. If the Mod Podge tends to be more liquidy and it tears that napkin a lot easier. So for napkins, I much prefer to use the Golden Regular Gel Mat because it's a little bit thicker, but it will still soak all the way through the napkin and adhere it to the cardstock really well, but it still leaves that velvety feel to the finished result. And I like that. Once I have a good brushing of the regular gel mat on that piece of cardstock, I very carefully place my one ply of my napkin on top of that. And I just take my time to get it to where I want it, and I gently tap tap it around. And then I happen to have different tools that I use. I like this particular brayer, and I just roll it across there and that adheres it really well. I, um, before I had that, I used a rolling pin, just gave it a nice even pressure, knocking out any bubbles. I do it real light over the top. If it's still a little sticky, like right there, then I just will flip it over onto my glass mat and I will do the back side of it and roll it down really nice and get all the bubbles out really well. One of the hints I will tell you that if you do this, because that gel is going all the way through the real thin ply of the napkin, you'll want to be sure to clean your glass mat off right away. So I keep a wet paper towel handy, and if it's not wet enough, then I just spray some water from my Mr. Bottle onto my glass mat and clean that off before it has a chance to dry and get, you know, crunchy on my glass mat. And at this point, I'm kind of trying to show you that there's no shine coming through that napkin. Um, it's rather a matte finish. It's still really soft. It's wet right now, so the cardstock is trying to curl up a little bit. I just use a stamp block, one of my acrylic blocks, and weight it down and let it dry completely. 
So while that's drying, I'm going to take another piece of white cardstock, again, four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I'm going to put some newspaper on this one. I try to rip up my newspaper so that I don't have any pictures of people on it. I also try to avoid having newspaper that has pictures on the back that are color because when those get wet, they've kind of come through. Again, I'm going to go with the golden regular gel mat for this example, although I am going to do one also. I have one that I did in Mod Podge so that you can see the difference in the, how it looks and also how it takes ink for when I want to make it have a different look when I'm making the card. So basically I'm just kind of going along and using my golden regular gel mat. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by any of these products at all. I'm just telling you what I use and how it works best for me. But I'm just going ahead and putting that uh, newspaper all over the top of my white piece of cardstock. Okay, so now I'll just kind of give you a look. This one is done with Mod Podge, and as you see, it's got more of a shine to it, reflects the light a lot more. And here's the piece done with the uh, gel mat, and you see it's not as reflective, and it has a little bit of a softer texture to it. And that's also like with the napkin now that it's dry, too. So if you want to, you can just trim it with a paper trimmer, like I'm showing here. Um, I just slide the napkin under there and get it up to where I want to trim it and trim it. And I just wanted to show you how easy and smooth that looks when you use a paper trimmer. It comes out very nicely. But since I'm going to die cut this, I'll show you if you're just going to die cut, just kind of rip off that extra napkin and put it aside. And because your dies are going to be smaller probably anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and die cut this particular one. And it will run through there really nice through my die cutting system and it makes for a really pretty edge around that. So that piece is ready to go. For my newspaper piece I decided to use my Tim Holtz Vitonic Deckle Trimmer and give it an edge and I'm just cutting off about a quarter inch of each of it so that it ends up being uh, four inches by say five and a quarter inches. That will fit nice on top of my regular A2 size card. So I'm just going around and trimming it up till I get the measurements that I want. And I like how it gives that, that torn looking edge. It goes well with the torn idea of the newspaper. <laughs> Of course, I could have used a straight edge trimmer. I could have used a die. Whatever you have in your stash to make your edges. Next, I'm going to use some Distress Ink because I want to make it look a little bit older, antique, aged. And so I'm just, this particular ink pad that I have is almost completely dry. So it works out really well. I can just use it straight on there. And because it has that gel matte finish, it takes the ink pretty well on this particular one. Then I went to a little bit darker shade and the vintage photo shade. And I'm using my uh, blending brush to help kind of soften that and blend it around, give it that antique look. I also wanted to show you this particular piece. This is a piece that I had done the Mod Podge on, so it has a lot shinier look to it. And you can see I tried to kind of turn in the light there. It's a lot smoother to the feel. I die cut that one, and I'm going to do the same antiquing process where I'm just going to rub my ink pad straight over the top of it. As you see, it's not absorbing the ink as easily. It will dry eventually, you know, if you leave it on there, it will air dry. Um, I went ahead and tried to just kind of rub it into all the edges really well with my little blending brush to make sure it got down in there. But it's a whole different texture to it. So it doesn't want to antique quite as easily as the matte finish wants to antique. But you can make it look like it's not a brand new fresh newspaper simply by 
using your brown inks and working with it a little bit. But it takes a little bit more time to dry, although it does have that pretty shine to it when you're all done. So if that's the look you're looking for, you can get that using Mod Podge too. So here we have both pieces side by side. The one on the left is the matte finish. The one on the right is the Mod Podge finish. You'll have to let me know which one you like better in the comments below. And so next I'm just going to go ahead and stamp some images on there. Use whatever you have in your stash. This is a lot of fun because you're just putting some black stamped images on there. I happen to like these peonies, but you can put buildings, you can put just, you know, whatever you have in your stash for this part. It's a lot of fun just to add that different layer of some sort of image onto this newspaper. So once I have all that stamping done while I let that dry a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and make my card base. Again, I've just taken a half a sheet of 8.5 by 11 black cardstock. I'm scoring it down the middle at 4 and a quarter and folding it to make my card base for a black card base. Of course, you'll want to make your own insert for the inside of the card in a lighter color so that whatever you write or stamp will show up. Now I just need to attach this onto my card base. Now I'm going to use something that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. This is some of those metallic looking puffy stickers. And I wasn't real sure which one I wanted to use, so finally I picked the one out. One of the interesting things I noticed was when I peeled that sticker off of there, if I'd wanted to, I could have done some weeding and poked out some of the center. I kept looking at that kind of impressed with the fact that if I'd wanted to, I could have weeded out some of those parts. Um, but I decided to leave them all intact, leave them there. And because I never really trust the adhesive on a lot of these stickers, I went ahead and added a line of my own liquid adhesive. And then I'm trying to line it up straight there and put that onto the card. For my sentiment, I'm going to use some letter block stickers that I have in my stash. I have no idea where I got them. I don't remember. I just had them in my stash but I thought they would work well with the coloring and what I needed for this card because I just wanted to write the words miss you on the front of this card. So I will work on getting those letters down and again because I don't really trust the adhesive, although that one was stuck really well, I couldn't get it back up, um, I did add some of my own liquid adhesive. <laughs> Once I had all those letters on there, I decided it still needed a little bit more bling to it, so I've decided to pull out some silver embossing paste that I have, and I didn't want it on the letters or on the puffy sticker, so I just kind of made a mask for those parts using just some scratch paper there, and I'm just going to splatter on the silver embossing paste rather than use a stencil for it, just use it as more of a splatter. And I try to make sure when I'm doing splatter technique with something like embossing paste that I don't have very much on my brush and my first bang of the brush is done over the top of the mask so that I don't end up with great big globs on there. And so you'll see the bigger globs are on my mask there and the smaller spots are on the actual card background. And then I just lift that off and sit it aside to let it dry. Once that was dry, I decided it needed even a little bit more. So I pulled out some wax in silver that's just some melting wax for wax seals and a little piece of scrap twine that I had sitting on my desk that I don't know where it came from. I just thought it was kind of cool. So I saved that and I've got some glue dots because I'd like to place the twine with the glue dots before trying to put the wax down to kind of hold it all in place. Although I don't put very much of the glue dot down, so sometimes, you know, when the hot wax hits it, you'll see that it will pop loose or whatever, but normally it'll hold it long enough for the wax to get onto it, and that's all I'm hoping for. So I've got one glue dot on there, and then I realize I need just a little bit more because that 
twine is um, being stubborn and wanting to jump up and have a life of its own. So I'm going to stick another glue dot on there and then I'm going to melt my wax, pour it on there and use a love seal and press it down. that's how my newspaper card turned out with all sorts of different techniques incorporated there. What about the hummingbird napkin? Well here's one of the cards. I just added a little bit of ribbon and a sentiment, put it on a black card base, and ended up with this really sweet soft to the touch sort of card. Here's a one that is a little bit simpler. I didn't put as much on it, just put happy birthday. Really easy to mail pretty, has a nice texture to it because of the uh, that soft napkin on there. Okay, so thank you for watching today. I hope that I gave you some helpful information or at least inspired you to pull out the supplies you already have and play with them a little bit. Thank you again for watching. Please like and subscribe and happy paper crafting! Mm -hmm.